When light painting, you have the option to let the whole scene in one go or to shoot a series of smaller exposures and blend them into one using Photoshop. The single and the multiple exposure approach. Each has its advantages and disadvantages. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate the techniques and concepts involved in the single exposure light painting, as well as how to combine multiple light painting exposures into one single image. Let's first have a look at the single exposure or one shot approach. In the single exposure light painting, we use a long exposure to paint in the entire scene in one go. Although it's called the single exposure approach, you'll have to take a series of shots or attempts before you'll get it right. It's a technique that involves a lot of trial and error. The single exposure refers to the fact that within every single exposure you paint in the whole scene. You start with the first trial and then you analyze the result. Where in the image is the light okay? Where should you put more or less light? And did you make any mistakes? Do you show up in the scene? Did you by accident point a flashlight towards the camera? Or did you forget to paint in certain areas? Now, it can take 5 to 20 exposures before you get it right. And sometimes even more than that. Every trial will be different and you try to improve from shot to shot. It's really a process of trial and error. Now, the control you have over your light setting depends on your light painting skills, as well as on the complexity of the scene. This kind of light painting is best suited for simple or small compositions. The longer your exposures and the more complex your light composition, the more attempts you'll need to get it right. The biggest advantage in the single exposure approach is the fact that all magic will happen while shooting. You are creating the whole image in camera. And these images will only need minor post-processing. So, if you don't like to work with Photoshop, the single exposure approach is the way to go. And when well done, this form of light painting can be really, really beautiful. You're really creating a unique work of art coming straight out of your camera. The biggest disadvantage is that although you have quite some control over the light setting, it can be difficult to get a perfect smooth lighting. And the more complex the scene, the more difficult it will be to create a flawless exposure within one single attempt. Now, if the scene or the light composition is too complex and you still want to control the light to a really high degree, you'll need to choose the multiple exposure approach. In the multiple exposure approach, we create a series of shorter exposures. And for every shot, we lit up a different part of the scene. The advantage here is that you will have more control over your overall light composition. And that you don't have to worry too much about possible mistakes. After the shoot, some or all of these exposures can be combined in Photoshop to create a single light painting image. You'll just combine the best sections of these shots into one final image. And any flaw or mistakes you'll just leave out. You can take this to the extremes and can create a very complex light painting, combining dozens or hundreds of exposures. Combining dozens of images in Photoshop can be very time consuming. Normally I don't take it to these extremes. Mostly I limit the amount of layers to about 20 or less and post-processing these takes about 15 to 45 minutes. You can also choose to keep it simple. When selecting the right scene or composition, you'll be able to create amazing light paintings by only blending two, three or four separate exposures. And for this kind of images, post-processing in Photoshop will only take 5 to 15 minutes. If you want to apply the multiple exposure approach, you'll need some basic Photoshop skills. We'll be working with layers, masks and blending modes. But don't worry if your Photoshop skills are limited. I will explain all steps in great detail. 
Ok, now we know the two different approaches to light painting. It's time to look at the gear we'll need and that's what we'll discuss in next chapter. See you then.